Welcome, everyone. Um, this is uh, going to be another session about uh, about GitHub Code Spaces. So, if you're here for Code Spaces, you're in the you're in the right room. Before we uh, get started, big thank you to the sponsors that made it possible for us to be back here after three years. So, thanks to uh, everyone there. A little bit about myself. I'm Jaap. Uh, I've I don't know how many times I've spoke here, but uh, returning speaker here, I've been playing around with PowerShell ever since it uh, first came out. I'm currently a developer advocate at Harness, uh, doing software delivery, a lot of CI CD stuff, so a good match with my personal interests of coding and automating uh, everything. Uh, the dog here, I got some comments about it because I've been posting and tweeting a lot of pictures of the dog. I don't actually own the dog, so it's not sad for him that he isn't actually uh, at home all the time. It's my parents' dog. I just use him for likes and interaction. <laughs> so the dog is fine, is all I'm saying. So the agenda for today, we're going to talk about code spaces. So if you want to learn more about that, uh, I got a couple of things uh, uh, about it, so we're going to talk about getting started with code spaces and a little bit about what it is and what you can use it for, some of the advantages it brings. Uh, we're going to go over a couple of demos of how you can use it, what you can do with it. We're also going to talk a bit about uh, GitHub.dev, so developing directly uh, on GitHub, and also how it relates to code spaces and why code spaces is better. And then we're going to do a lot of demos. Uh, I was going to do a lot of live demos. I can still do live demos, but I recorded everything because I don't trust the Wi-Fi here. It's also one of the things that I find at conferences. Uh, I think the bravest thing you can do as a sponsor is sponsor the Wi-Fi because it, al it always goes bad. <laughs> and I'll leave some time for, uh, for Q&A uh, as well. So about code spaces, uh, I was thinking of making a slide myself, but when the marketing material already looks so good, I just decided to go for what, uh, what GitHub uh, offers on the features page. So um, code spaces uh, allows us to, uh, to run our code directly uh, in a GitHub code space. And a GitHub code space is just a containerized environment in which you can, uh, in which you can run your code. So, what it is, is uh, it is a container. Uh, it is defined in your repository or in a branch of your repository. And you can specify uh, things like what kind, of, uh, what kind of specifications does this machine have, uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of tools need to be installed, uh, what, what kind of uh, extensions do you want to install. It supports pretty much any language. Um, one of the cool things is it uh, supported PowerShell from release, which is not always the case, so that was a good job, GitHub. Uh, you can customize your project, uh, you can customize your code spaces based on your project and uh, what you need. And uh, you can also uh, sync your personal settings uh, if you so uh, desire to do. Um, how does it work? So, as most things that are uh, containerized, everything is defined. Uh, everything is defined in JSON. So uh, there's a JSON file in, the, in your uh, uh, in your root in your repository, and you can use that to define your settings uh, for uh, the the software that needs to be installed. Optionally, uh, you can uh, you can also add uh, VS Code extensions in there, and you can uh, define those based on uh, what, what is required. So for example, if you have a PowerShell project that you're working on with your team, uh, you can set up a number of extensions that can, uh, can help your team members onboard faster. So instead of having, uh, having a guide in which you define like, you need, uh, the, you need to install the PowerShell extension on your VS Code, you need to install uh, a PS script analyzer, you need to install XYZ. You can just define this on the project level, and all you need to do is you point, uh, you point a new team member to the code space, you tell them to connect to it, uh, you give them the appropriate permissions there, and they're, uh, they're good to go. And 
permissions are just the GitHub permissions because there's nothing specific to, uh, to code spaces. So what you need to get started, just a GitHub account. Does everyone have a GitHub account here? Yeah? Good. Doesn't work without a GitHub account. Uh, the good thing is it's free for us. Uh, if we want to use it with a company, with our team, it's no longer free. It, uh, it will cost money and it can take a little bit longer to set up than it does if you, uh, if you want to use it for uh, personal use because you'll actually have to reach out to, uh, to GitHub and uh, get, get a paid account set up for your, uh, for your company. Um, I actually went through the process last week to get it set up uh, within Harness and that was pretty pretty quick process. I think we had it set up in two days and most of the delay came from getting internal approval rather than GitHub being slow. So it is, uh, it is quite fast and you can also set spending limitations uh, on your account so it won't be too expensive. Uh, uh, it will be ex as expensive as you want it to be. And what it allows you to do is you can run your code from anywhere. And this is uh, particularly useful if you're like me. Um, currently, I have my MacBook with me. I develop and work on that one if I'm on the go. At home, I have a nice PC. And my PC is faster than my MacBook. So when I'm at home, I don't use my MacBook. And I got a bit sick of maintaining all the same tools on both my MacBook and on my uh, PC. So using code spaces just takes that, takes that part away and you can have your tools uh, defined in your code space. And also the dependencies uh, as well. And I'm, oh, uh, I was expecting to get questions about this one. So it is the least interesting part. How much does it cost? So uh, I put the calculation up there, if you would use it for 160 hours, so if you would use it full time for 40 hour weeks, it would be for the most expensive one, 460 a month, which is kind of expensive. And the cheapest, uh, cheapest option, and also extremely slow, uh, would be uh, 30 a month. So you can, uh, you can choose your own poison. Uh, obviously, if you let developers choose, they will always choose the, the fastest one, and yeah. That's, uh, that would be my option as well. But you can, uh, the advantage of code spaces is uh, if you leave it running and you don't do anything with it, it will automatically shut down after 30 minutes and you can change that timeout. So there, there isn't any spend if there isn't any active development uh, going on. So the alternative, and that is where, uh, where I came from. And this was actually a guide around the time uh, when Codespaces was released. It's been around for about two years now. I think maybe a little bit less. It was announced in 2020, but I don't know when exactly. And I was trying to, uh, I was trying to work, uh, I work a lot, a lot with APIs and I was trying to build some documentation for, uh, for one of our API stacks. And for that, I needed, uh, I needed a Node.js project. I was working with Swagger. And I was trying to get this running on WSL. Uh, WSL is the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. And th the thing that I ran into there is whenever you run, uh, uh, whenever I was running commands there, uh, in WSL, the commands are slightly different from Linux. So the standard build skits might error out. So I would go to a cycle of troubleshooting what kind of syntax I needed, updating the syntax, fixing it, and then hitting the next roadblock. And it ended up taking me about uh, two hours to get it, uh, well, three hours it says there, two or three hours, uh, to, get it, uh, to get it to work. Um, and this was a task that I, I didn't do too often because I don't have to build my API documentation all the time. So four months later, uh, I was on the go, someone asked me, ah, can you make some updates to it? And I was on a different device because I wasn't at home and I, uh, uh, I had to start all over, go to the process again. And at that time, I, uh, I discovered that Codespaces was there and then I set it up once in Codespaces and then any time going forward, if I needed to make changes there, um, it was all set up, uh, all set up for me. 
And with that, I'm going to uh, kick it off with some demos. If you have any questions already, um, ask now, and otherwise I'll uh, dive into it. And I'll uh, turn on my timer here so I don't go over. Cool. So the first one is uh, if you went to Barbara's session, uh, this is my, uh, my GitHub uh, profile. So this is the Yaab Rasa repository. And what I do here is, let's pause this so it doesn't go too fast. Uh, what I do here is uh, to get into the developer uh, experience on GitHub it, uh, is you either press the dot or you can change the URL. So instead of github.com, I think I'm going to change the forms later on in this video. Uh, instead of going to github.com, you go to github.dev, and then you get this VS Code-like editing experience in which you can edit your code. So what I'm showing here is uh, I show off that there's a couple of uh, JPEGs in there. Yes? Uh, it's a video. The, 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 the font will be bigger in the, in the next month or later on in this video. I think I fixed it in the recording. And so now I'll go take a look at some of the other options, the other animals that are in there. So you can see we get live previews of the, was it your dog? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I, cho I, cho I, cho I chose Eddie here. <laughs> Is Dexter yours? Or? No, I'm saying that's the correct font size. Ah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and what I do, I can just edit it directly in here copy paste and then uh, commit this uh, to the repo directly from the editor here. And then when I commit it, then the new uh, picture will be in there. So if we go down here, we can see that it updated, and you just have a more rich editing experience than if you would just press the little pen that you have available in uh, in GitHub normally. So, yes, Justin. Small thing. They just added, so you can actually click the pen and have it take you straight to code spaces now rather than the principal one. That's the brand new thing. Okay, so, but this wasn't code spaces, it was uh, GitHub.dev. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, like yeah. Okay. okay, so it's updated now. Cool. So that's a neat trick. Uh, if you're working with GitHub, uh, this one really speeds up uh, if you need to make small changes, but it also works uh, quite well with a pull request. So that's the next example. This is uh, one of my modules, uh, customized Windows 11. Um, it's, I released this when Windows 11 came out and they moved the taskbar and th they changed the context menu and I'm very averse to change, and I couldn't do right-click unzip anymore. So, oh, that was not. Uh, I couldn't do right-click uh, extract file here anymore. So I created this module, and this module currently has a pull request. And normally, when I was reviewing pull requests, uh, I go to uh, I go to the website and I take a look at what is there. I would eventually pull it down to my, uh, to my local system. You can see there's a number of issues. Most of them are by me. Most of them are more than six months old, so I have a bit of a backlog there. And if we go into the pull request, you can see that there's uh, a single commit. The single commit uh, has a number of file changes. And you can, th this is a, Pretty straightforward uh, PR, there's just code added, so that makes it uh, pretty easy to review. Uh, but if you're working with larger projects, it can become quite complex to uh, get a good overview of what kind of changes someone made. And that is one of the things where, uh, where GitHub Dev also uh, can bring a solution, so that's what we're going to get into now. So we can see by pressing dot. So we can see, nice, I made the font bigger this time. Uh, we can see 
the, the files that have been changed, so the, the different PS1 files, we can directly comment, uh, we can ask for, uh, we, we can either approve them, uh, put a comment in there, or we can, uh, we can request changes and just put it back and then move out of the, move out of the review uh, mode. So it's quicker than the, the normal route of uh, first pulling the pull request to local, having a look at what changed uh, compared, to, uh, compared to before the pull request and then uh, pushing it back upstream. So it's a, it's a big, uh, big time saver for me there. Cool. So that is GitHub, uh, 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 GitHub uh, development mode. And the next, oh, the next one is going to be uh, actual actual co code spaces. So before we start with this demo, what we're going to uh, what we're going to do here. So we're going to uh, we're going to take a look at um, let's see we're going to take a look at um, Uh, we're, we're going to take a look at uh, what we can do uh, with this uh, with this application and what happens if we uh, make changes to uh, to the port number. So um, that was cool. This is the correct uh, correct demo. That's the problem with uh, with pre recordings. Um, yeah, so um, I want to show the, the, the demo of uh, a small JavaScript project uh, that just hosts a simple website. Um, uh, how we can access the code spaces that we have available. We c can see an overview by going just to GitHub forward slash code spaces. And you get to see all your personal code spaces. So uh, that's not just the code space in your uh, repository, also the ones that you have access to uh, from your company. So the top one is the one we'll focus on. That's the one with a with a demo application uh, that is the simple haiku uh, uh, template. And the code spaces can be defined on the on a branch level. So we can see here if we're in main, there's nothing there. But if you go in the template branch, uh, this is where we created uh, created the code space. You can see we have haiku for code spaces in there. And if we want to take a look at what we have in there, we see that we have the port defined on port 3000 in the repository. And now we'll open up the code space. And one second, one thing I want to point out there. If we take a look here, we can see that we can choose between opening it in the browser, open it in Visual Studio Code, uh, put the changes into a branch, or change the machine type. So. Currently, it's set to uh, just a, core, a two core code space, but you can uh, set it to any kind of uh, any kind of machine type that's allowed by, in this case, your organization. So we'll open it up in the browser, and we can see that it takes a little bit of time because it was currently not running. So while we wait for that one to initialize, what we'll see, the moment we enter the code space, we come in the same kind of environment that we were in before with GitHub Dev. But the main difference is that instead of just being able to edit your code, you can now also run and debug your code directly either from the browser or uh, in VS Code. So while this is loading, We can see we get the number of uh, we can see the files on the left. We can see the changes uh, that are made on the right. And the reason there's already changes there is because the con uh, I stopped the container in a state where I didn't com commit my changes to the branch yet. So we can see here we have the packages that are currently uh, there. 
And we can also see that we made changes to Node.js. Uh, specifically, we changed the port number. And the difference is that we can now see that we also have the terminal, and that is something that's not available uh, when you are using GitHub Dev, because the terminal is uh, what, uh, what Codespaces offers. So if you go and take a look at index.js, you can see that I changed the, uh, the port number to 331. And what we'll do next is we'll actually run this JavaScript code and we'll see what it, uh, uh, what it does then. So we'll use Node.js for that. You can see that it launches and it will now start running the application on port uh, 3001. And you'll immediately get the option to, uh, to run that, uh, to, to connect to it. So let's see what that looks like. So it will port forward uh, the application. And you can see if we take a look at the URL that this is uh, hosted on uh, the GitHub preview. And it takes about 20 seconds to load the first time. And that's the nice thing about recordings. We can skip through it now. So we can see the Haiku is running and we have our little, uh, little web app running directly. And if we change the port again, and run this one again, we'll get the same pop-up. So we reload the app, and we can connect to it again. And we can see that it directly updates. And in this case, it even took a little bit longer. And it even timed out. And I'm thinking this was the hotel Wi-Fi again, so this is why I'm happy I pre-recorded it. But refreshing it, and we can see it now running on a different port. But this is all uh, running in the browser on GitHub. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to uh, VS Code. In uh, we're going to switch over to VS Code. So we can do that directly from the browser. And we can continue working from the point uh, where we were in, uh, uh, in the browser. So we can see the port number is still uh, the same, even though we didn't commit any of the code yet to the repository. And we can now continue, uh, can, uh, we can now continue uh, working with the code, making edits, and go from there. So the first thing I'll try to do now is I'll try to run the code again. And we can see we immediately get an error. And the reason we get that error is because the address is already in use, because we already ran this application on this port, so the port is not, uh, not available in the, in the code space anymore. So we'll update that. Run it again. And now we'll see that uh, instead of getting the, the, GitHub, dot, uh, the GitHub code spaces URL, uh, the the, uh, the port will actually get forwarded to your uh, local address. So if we wait one second, we can see that we'll get it available on our local host. So we can see here, oh, but, oh back one second. So what we can see here is we have a number of ports available. So we have 117, uh, that was the one that, was, uh, that we started from, uh, from the browser. And now we also have uh, 1338. And we can directly go to that port with the browser button that is in there. So if we click it, we can see it opens right away. So you can continue working either from your browser or VS Code, uh, and you have one consistent experience uh, going on. The 
The important thing to keep in mind when you're working with, uh, with code spaces is that uh, as long as you don't commit, uh, the changes that you make in your code space, uh, they, they will stay there and you can either discard them or commit it back into the repository. So that was... So the way this works is that uh, you have your VS Code extension. That is one of the requirements when you're, uh, when you're working with code spaces. You want the extension installed and the extension will take care of the redirection uh, to localhost. And if you're running, uh, if you're running VS Code in a browser, uh, then it will be hosted on, uh, on GitHub. And if you're running the extension, the extension will take care of the port forwarding. And with that, we'll go over some of the other options. Let's. And that is, uh, instead of um, uh, in, instead of making the changes of your uh, of your machine type directly on GitHub, you can also do it uh, through VS Code. So let's go over that here. So we can see that if we go to oh, I'm going way too quick there. So we can see if we go to code spaces and go to change machine type, you can change it. Uh, you can change it on the fly. You can also take a look at the details that are there, and there's a couple of ways to get there. So we can see that uh, it goes up to 32. Uh, 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 it goes up to 32 cores, but in my organization, they disabled the option of 32 cores, so I cannot set it to, uh, to 32 cores, probably because they know me too well. But if we want to take a look at uh, the specific options, let me go to here. So we can see um, what repository it is in, so Harness Code Spaces. We can see the, the name, this is the autom uh, automatically generated. We can see which branch, and we can also see what kind of, uh, what kind of setup we have. So in this case, a two core code space. Some other things we can, uh, can do here, if we go to details from there, then uh, we end up on the same tab. And the important part here is that you can also stop your current code space. And the moment you stop it, uh, it is no longer running and no longer costing money. So after doing that, we're going to switch over to another code space. And this is the example I used earlier where I did my, uh, where I'm doing my API development. And in this case, what I decided to do is I want to make sure that uh, everyone that contributes to this, uh, to this repository has access to uh, the required extensions. And in this case, because we're working with uh, an API, uh, I want to make sure that Swagger, uh, the Swagger extension is going to be available for everyone. So I mentioned before that this is going to be defined in a JSON file. And I don't like editing JSON files because I always mess up. And whenever I add something to an array in a JSON file, I always put, forget to put the comma in there, and then my code doesn't work anymore. And then my JSON file is broken, and I just end up wasting a lot of time with that. Which is why I'm happy that uh, code spaces also and VS Code can also take care of that. So these are the extensions I have defined. We can see that there's, there's no swagger in there. So what I'll do now, I'll just continue using VS Code as I normally would. I go to the extensions tab. I take a look at Swagger. I ignore the first one because it only has 3K downloads, so that doesn't uh, seem legit to me. And then instead of just pressing install, we can see, well, I can see. It's probably small in the back, but you can, uh, you can choose to install it or you can just install it in VS Code Spaces. So you have an option of uh, just installing it in this code space because you might not always be working with something that requires the Swagger extension. 
So you might not want it loaded into your VS Code. Uh, you d might not always want it to load in your VS Code. So you can install it there. But what you can also do, and that's the next click, we can also add it to devcontainer.json. And what that means is that anyone that's working on this repository will have this extension available. So we're going to do that now and see that it actually works as intended. You can see that it has been added and we can directly click there. And we see that it is now added to the dev container. And it also asks us, because we made up the updates to it, we can see, we notice the change to the dev container configuration. Do you want to apply this or do you want to wait? Um, well, if you do rebuild now, this would, uh, this would take a while because it has to restart the container. But after it does that, you will have the extension available. Ooh. So, play from current slide. So, to summarize, why do we want to use uh, code spaces? Well, for me personally, it solved the problem of having to, uh, having to continuously set up my development environment, especially for projects that I don't work on on a daily basis, which in my case were, uh, were creating API documentation. I just want to be able to have a workspace somewhere, and I also don't want to care what kind of device it's used on. Uh, with GitHub code spaces, they advertise how uh, you can even write your code on your phone or on your iPad, but I mean, that's who, who is really going to do that? For me, it's just useful that I can run and develop my code either on my Windows box or on a Linux machine or on my MacBook, and it doesn't matter anymore because I've abstracted that part away. And I don't really want to care what kind of device I run my code on. I just want to be able to write the code and not waste time on troubleshooting why a certain uh, plugin is missing or a dependency isn't working because I'm using WSL1 instead of 2 and that kind of silly stuff. And you can choose to either, uh, to either sync your settings or don't sync your settings. So you can install extensions just for your code space or you can install it uh, uh, in, your, uh, in VS Code. Your settings will uh, will sync. So if you if you change things uh, in your in your code space, it will sync back to your VS Code, and vice versa. You can change this behavior. Um, it depends on what you uh, what your goal is. And the big advantage is uh, it can make uh, onboarding a lot faster, because the previous approach I had when I got sick of working with the API documentation was. I had to write a whole document of all the things that my teammates needed to install to do the same thing I did. And in this case, what I did was I just gave them, here is the repository. Everything is already defined. Just start editing and committing code to it, and you don't have to worry about uh, the installation of all the dependencies. And with that, I think we have 10 minutes for Q&A. So are there any questions? That's a good question. I think it's either two, I think it's four core. Barbara, did you check that out? I think it's four core. I have a screenshot with the sizes, but not with. I think it's for everyone now, but I'm not entirely sure. But, but uh, now I, I oh wait now it's not shared because I'm in uh, let's exit this one uh, here. So it's four core, at least with the subscription that uh, that I have. So on my personal, it's four core. I think at this point, if you activate it now, you can only activate Teams and Enterprise. 
Yeah, unless you have, unless you get a beta invite, which you can go there's a site you can go code spaces beta invite and then you just say sign up. And it's not it's not like a Gmail invite in the old day, like they'll eventually show up. I was at like very early so I don't Go up from the back. I have a question. Yes. How do you get to be so awesome? <laughs> so the question from the back was, how do you get to be so awesome? And I think this one was directed at Barbara. Barbara, can you ask, answer this question? Can I answer why you are so awesome? No, why you are so awesome. <laughs> 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 repeat my question. <laughs> Did you have a question, or did you just want to fist pump? Oh, OK. So there was this, the, this, the same question. Cool. <laughs> Any other questions about actual code spaces? How do you do a training day on VA tools in a code space? Can I do it? Uh, so, sorry. Can I do a training day off? So the question is, can I do a training day in DBA, the DBA tools in code spaces? Um, to answer honestly, I could not give a training day. I could participate in a training day, but I know that uh, SQL DBA with a beard or with beard is probably the right person to give this training in GitHub code spaces. And yes, it's also possible in GitHub code spaces. And there's a session in an hour and 55 minutes. <laughs> Sydney. Yeah, I'm not sure if this question exactly makes sense, but say you're using a module that um, in some way uses like registration or writes to the file system. Um, does that work in code spaces? Do you have access to the file system? Yes. You, 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 yeah, so the question was, uh, if you're working with a module that needs access to the file system, do you have that access? Yes, you have access to the file system. Question, the question is, can we run SQL Server? Yes, we can run SQL Server there. But only the, uh, the .NET Core version, I think. So the differences between using it in an organization or for personal? Uh, so I started out with, uh, with using it uh, for personal use uh, because I got annoyed by the fact that I, when I was switching devices, I couldn't, uh, I, I had to set up my dev environment every time. Uh, but once I'd set it up in code spaces, I just cloned that repository to, to my organization, and then I just kind of threw it over the fence to my colleagues, like, now you do it. I, I, I put it together, that was the fun part, now you can manage. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, f from a technical point of view, there's not much of a difference. The, the biggest difference is the licensing part, where you have to set up a spend limit and have like an agreement with GitHub that you enable code spaces. You also get now uh, pre -voted. Like, like, I always say, like, it took a while to load. You can actually have a preloaded image for your like, company that will be like, ready to go for like a base level, even for, like on a per project basis. So you can get the spin a much faster if you want more. Like, it works really well. They have a really good one article that goes through like what they've done to make that work really fast. It's really interesting. So there was an addition. There was an addition that uh, you can also preload if you're uh, on a corporate uh, corporate code code basis. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll give you five minutes back. Cool. Thank you.